This is 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, episode number 64, Feng Shui, your vision board for success. Welcome to the 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, where each week I talk about how to move energy and make money. You'll learn how to create a prosperous home and an abundant life using classical Chinese Feng Shui. I'm your host, Katie Weber, publisher of the Red Lotus Letter, Feng Shui Easing for Wealth. Each week, I'll cover feng shui topics that can help you improve your life, share inspiring stories, and always end with three easy to implement feng shui tips that you can put to work right away, and usually in about five minutes. Now let's get started on the five minutes that could change your life. Hello and Happy New Year! Welcome to 2020 and thank you for joining me this week on 5 Minute Feng Shui. I am getting off to a quick start in the new year. I've got all kinds of personal and professional goals that I am looking at and am so excited because the new year is a time when you get to wipe the slate clean when you can put out your list of wants and desires for the year. Now, this is something that uh, is really near and dear to me because I like to think of the new year as a time of when I'm planting my energetic garden. And, um, And this is a time when you start thinking about how you wanna see the months and the year roll out for you. That's what I do. I always say that I don't like to uh, wish for things as much as I like to plan them. I feel like by writing things down, by visualizing, by thinking about what I want in the year ahead, it's amazing how things can happen. And I will tell you how powerful this is because in 2018, uh, my husband and I moved to Mexico and we gave away everything, (laughs) all our possessions. I mean, all our belongings and what we could fit in the back of our car with our two dogs was what we took and his golf clubs let me not forget that so that meant you know less things for me to bring and what fit in the back of our car and with our two dogs is what we took and we were there to help him break a cycle of 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 a skin related uh, problem that he had with rheumatoid arthritis which was successful then we moved back uh, kind of quickly uh, and surprisingly, we, we had thought about staying there, but we wanted to come back and be uh, closer to our son who's in college and, and our family members. And I got everything back. I got it all back. So I'm here to tell you that if you think that you cannot manifest things, if you think that you can't achieve what you want in the year, I can tell you from personal experience, I've given it all away and gotten it all back. And by that, I mean dishes, I mean uh, furniture, towels, (laughs) everything that you need to put into a house. We got rid of and we got it all back. And this is how powerful starting out the New Year Strong can be for you. And this is why I put so much energy into my annual feng shui forecast, my success pack, and why I talk so much about the year, because this is your energetic garden that you can plant right now to reap what you've sown all year long. So let's talk today about vision boards, because these are great tools for creating things in your life for making manifesting and making things happen the way you want them to happen instead of you know just being at the mercy of life and having life happen to you Uh, this is the whole whole point is to put you in that driver's seat so let's talk about vision boards a lot of people have known about them and i i wanted to talk about them with a little twist and obviously being a feng shui podcast you can guess that that twist is feng shui so this, if you're not familiar with a vision board, it's, it's a board, it could be just a piece of paper, it could be a, uh, a piece of glass, it could be uh, a big uh, post-it notepad, whatever uh, you uh, want to use to put your goals up uh, or put your goals on. Uh, I like just a regular eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Uh, but I like to get the card stock myself. I think that, that it's, it's more durable. And uh, if you wanna take it another step further, like my husband does, 
does, he gets his laminated. Uh, I think that's a really great way to, to solidify uh, your, your vision board. So a vision board is it, it's just a way to represent visually the aspirations and goals that you have for your life with images. The images can be pictures of things that you'd like to have, maybe a house where you'd like to live or a car you'd like to drive. It could be a title such as president or CEO that you want to aspire to, or maybe you want to be a writer, an actor, a president. Now, I know that when uh, I started my writing career, I was very tentative about calling myself a writer. People say, well, what have you written? Do I know anything? And everyone expects when you (laughs) say you're a writer, did you write a New York Times bestselling book? Well, of course I did. Yeah, everyone does. Anyway, but uh, but it was hard for me to use that word, and so I would put I would wrote the word writer a lot of places, and until it became comfortable with me, and even seeing the the word is as an image is so important because people respond well to images. We they inspire us in ways that words don't, and I they inspire our our subconscious mind which is really at the driver's seat if you want to know the truth and we need to think about how do we get to our subconscious mind that untapped potential that talks to us every night in our dreams and it does it how it does it in images we see images every night whether you remember your dreams or not that's what your that's how your mind processes information so combining a goals list with a vision board is so powerful now in feng shui when compass feng shui flying star or another type of feng shui merge together i call this compounding feng shui it's sort of like compounding interest in the bank so if you can put different types of feng shui together and get them to work it compounds all the goodness stuff and that makes it more powerful. And the simple act of writing out your goals is also powerful. And then when you compound it with a vision board, it makes it more powerful still. Now, when you add feng shui to that to that equation, now you have a vision board that can propel you to a whole new place. Are you ready for that? I mean, really, really ready? Because many people say that they want something new, but new can be scary. Just be ready that you really are truly ready to move forward on this because when you put yourself into it and you see it happening and you write it down and you visualize it and you put it in images, it makes, it's, it's amazing what you can manifest and what you can bring about in your life. And a vision board is a natural fit with feng shui. Feng shui focuses on both what is seen and what is unseen. So energy that is both intangible and tangible. Now we understand that at any given moment, whatever we're surrounded by is influencing us. If we're surrounded by a mess, we may feel frustrated, annoyed, and not know why. Or if sad pictures or painful reminders are constantly in our presence and around our house, we may feel depressed or feel like we can't get any traction or move ahead in our lives. So this is why we want to select symbols that are meaningful to you. We want to put ourselves in a position where we're going to see symbols that represent what we want. Now, Feng Shui understands that symbols are influencers and they're important ones. So when you're selecting symbols for your vision board, you always want to select those symbols that are meaningful to you, right? That's that. So this, let's say for instance, the number 13 is meaningful for you. A lot of people think of it as very negatively, but if it's meaningful to you in a positive way, then include that. So don't worry about what other people think or what other people might um, feel about a particular image. If it's meaningful to you, put that image on your vision board. Now, I like to select symbols from the eight feng shui aspirations. Now, the eight aspirations are the principles that feng shui is founded on. Each aspiration is tied to a particular direction. So career and income, like the salary that we earn, is the aspiration of the North. Health and our family relationships, this is the aspiration of the East. Uh, helpful people and the man of the house this is associated with southwest excuse me northwest and love and romance and marriage this is and and the woman of the house this is associated with the southwest for instance so by using all the directions uh, uh and and tying them with the aspiration from each direction you can put the your 
create a vision board that follows the Bagua. The Bagua is an octagon that is based on, it's the eight corners. So we know an octagon is, is like a stop sign and, it, and each corner relates to a different direction and a different aspiration. So if you can just imagine that your, if you were to take a, that octagon and make it a square, so that's your, your piece of paper or your, your vision board that you're working on, you can imagine that you're going to use eight corners of this, of this particular piece of paper. And, and we'll talk about how you can do that. So always start with the North corner. Uh, you can start it. There's two ways you can start it. I like to start at the North, uh, with at the bottom of the sheet of paper. So you're going to turn your piece of paper, uh, landscape. So it's going to be wide, not the tall, uh, portrait type, but on the landscape. So that's how we're going to arrange our vision board. Now, typically a bagua is oriented with the North at the very bottom center of the page. And so that would move in a clockwise direction from the bottom center to the bottom left is northeast. And then at the, the middle center would be east. And then the upper left hand corner is going to be southeast and so on. So you'll just follow the directions in that in that order. Now, if you don't like that particular order, you can always start your vision board with whatever is most important to you. I think this is a, this is a great way to arrange your business. Your, your vision board. You can come up with a couple of, or let me talk to you about a couple of different ways that you can arrange it. So if you don't like the, the money or the career uh, aspect uh, on the bottom, some people like to start at the top and work their way down. I'd say work wherever it's most important to you. So you've got a couple of options. One option is to put the most important aspiration that you have. Maybe it's health at the very center or at the top middle, and then work your way around that way. I think that this is a really important way to, to create that sort of compounding in, uh, energy. So for instance, if you are single and you're ready for someone new to come into your life and you're ready for love, I, I would put on your vision board, put love smack in the center there. I think that would be terrific. And then have the top middle portion of your vision board, fill it with symbols of love for the Southwest direction. Then follow that in a clockwise, uh, circle from, uh, to, from right to left uh, in with the rest of your aspirations. Uh, this is a great way that will help you to go from um, uh, in, in a forward motion because that clockwise movement is a forward motion and our eyes perceive clockwise movement as forward motion. And that's important that we have that in our vision board because, well, we're looking for forward motion in our lives, aren't we? Whether that's with our health, or our relationships or finding someone new, a love interest or uh, having a, a, a big step up in our career or, or making some new financial goals for yourself. So don't forget, really important that when you're working on your vision board to add a spark of life. And that is you want to make sure that your vision board appears vibrant and it's active and interesting. Make it colorful. Put all the colors uh, on your vision board and you can arrange them by, by sector and, and by aspiration if you like. But really important that you have some good colors, very auspicious colors in there like purple, red, pink, yellow, green, all those colors and blue, uh, they all represent various aspects of feng shui. So let's go through some of those colors that you might want to have. So for instance, black and blue and aqua and turquoise, those are colors that are relevant to income, to making money, to increasing flow and abundance. Love, intelligence, wisdom, decision-making, romance, marriage, the color that is associated with that is yellow. Yellow is especially important for intelligence. So if you're looking to learn something, enroll in a course, take a class, teach a class, uh, learn, any kind of learning uh, is also associated with the color yellow. Now, love is, is also associated with the color yellow, but it's enhanced by the color red and pink and purple. Now, if 
you're interested in health, and you might be noticing I'm going in the Bagua directions. <laughs> so uh, hopefully it'll help, help you uh, make notes for your vision board. So if you're interested in health, then you're going to put colors of green and brown. I really like the colors of green and because it's new growth. It's active growth and vibrant growth. Now this is also the same color for the South east this is the wealth location and when we think of wealth what do we think of well we think of green right dollars we think of making money and we think of greenbacks so having green in both the health and the wealth location means growing vibrancy we want that for both our money and both our health right now when we think about fame and social recognition maybe you want more friendships in your life well that color is the color red and we want to enhance that in the south sector of our bagua on our vision board red colors are auspicious purple colors fuchsia so make it bright and really vibrant in this area and this will help to fire up your fame energy and help you um, maybe with some social uh, situations maybe more friendships or do more fun things socially it's a great way or you know you also can get famous <laughs> if fame is actually what you're looking for maybe you're an actor or you have an online presence and you're looking for uh, more exposure that's your corner is the south now in the southwest we talked about that it's the same as the northeast this is the love direction and it is an earth it is an earth sector yellow beige taupe are wonderful colors now love is typically associated with red and pink and fuchsia and purple however when you think about love, you want to think about very grounded love. If you're looking for like a long-term relationship, you're tired of you're tired of swiping left and swiping right and that kind of thing, and you're tired of clicking to find a date, and you want something that's stable, that's smart, that is secure. Yellow is an excellent color for love bright clear sunny yellow it's also great for women it activates women and it activates true and committed love relationships so if that's what you're looking for in love well then that's the color for the southwest corner now the west corner this is for children this is also for creativity projects like if you're a writer you're an artist you do creative projects that color there is related to the color gray and white and these are metal colors and they're wonderful colors for enhancing your creativity for maybe bringing more um, creative juices into your life and also for children as well now one color that goes really really well with this particular corner is purple I call purple the feng shui beige if you've known me for any time <laughs> I you probably know I say that purple is the feng shui beige this is a great color to have here as is metallic colors especially silver so if you're looking for for children silver is the color of starlight in heaven and where children come from right babies come from heaven <laughs> so these are great colors to put on your on, in the west corner of your of your aspiration and your vision board now in the northwest this is the heaven location this is considered the the man the the location for uh for the man of the house if there is a man of the house of course the southwest is more important if you're a woman-owned business or you're the you're a single mom you're the woman of the house but if you're looking for a man or you want to go travel or you feel like you need more help in your life you need someone to take you under their wing or make introductions that heaven energy is enhanced by the color color gold gold white and purple all beautiful colors for getting you on the road doing international travel having more helpful people in your life and attracting mentors it's a great corner to activate for everyone now if you are concerned that certain corners aren't good for you based on your your personal quad number or something like that don't we all need those particular we energies of every corner and i'm going to talk about that in next week's episode of five minute feng shui now 
as always, one of the things I like to do, as always, we're going to add, I mentioned earlier, we want that spark of life. So really, really important that um, that you add some red paper to the back of your of your board. I often, uh, one of the things I did uh, is I laminate, I'll, I'll take a, a piece of cardstock and I'll put red paper on the back and then laminate it so it's all, it's red. Uh, this is a great way to activate it. Now, you can also add a piece of red ribbon to it if you if you'd like to do that or you could tie or tape or glue some uh, Chinese three tie coins. Those are also really auspicious and great to add to your vision board. And don't forget, you've got to be able to see where you want to go. So you've got to put that vision board where you will see it often. It's really important. I like to put things that uh, I like to envision straight in front of me at my desk. I also put it at uh, at my uh, my dressing counter in, in my bathroom. So I see it every day as I'm I'm getting dressed. Uh, you could put it in your closet. You could put it wherever you're going to see it a lot. It's really important that you see that um, that vision prominently. Now, don't forget, you can add visions. Excuse me. You can add images. You can also add words. I like doing both. I think they're both very powerful in their own way. So, um, you know, rather than just having images or just words, I'd say do a collection or do a, an assembly of both. All right, now, if this uh, has, hasn't has gotten you excited about doing a vision board, I don't know. Uh, I sure am. Uh, I haven't started one for this year, but uh, it's got me kind of fired up to get one going. Now, if you want to know more about the year, be sure to check out my, my Year of the Rat article. It, just go to redlotusletter.com forward slash rat, and you can get more information all about the Year of the Rat. And uh, uh, let's finish up with the three tips that I always leave you with. Tip number one, always match your images with words. I really like that a lot. Uh, make sure that you have uh, an image and that there is a corresponding uh, word for that because they, like I said earlier, they work on different levels in our minds. And it's amazing how having the two together can make such a difference. Now, place this tip number two is place your vision board where you see it frequently the more you see it the more those images go into your brain and influence you and you start doing things and start attracting things and things just seem to fall into place it's it's amazing how it happens number three is to activate your vision board with red make sure that it's got plenty of color but also that it has some great red color in it uh, I I gave a tip earlier that I like to put my vision board and backed with a piece of red paper and then you can also laminate it as well. All right, that's all for this week's episode and I look forward to talking to you next week on episode 65 for your feng shui personality. Take care and have a great week. Thanks for being with me today. Thanks for listening to 5-Minute Feng Shui today. The Year of the Rat is coming and I want to share with you where you can find money, love, and opportunity in 2020. And it's all in my annual Feng Shui Forecast the Success Pack. You get a full year of in-depth Feng Shui details about how to use the energy of the year for success and prosperity. That's because every year we're showered with a Roman candle of opportunities for money, abundance, love, and opportunity. You just have to know where they are. And my Year of the Rat Feng Shui Success Pack includes all the details for every house and every zodiac sign. You also get this year's lucky clothing, handbag, and wallet colors. So be sure to go to redlotusletter.com forward slash rat for all the details on the Year of the Rat and how to make this year the year of your dreams.